Welcome to the Cedar Foundation's Disability Awareness Training. Cedar's Disability Awareness Training covers facts about disability that you may not be aware of, provides guidance about what you can do to support a person with a disability, and provides information for employers. Section 1. Disability, the facts. Take a minute to think about these three statements and decide for you. Statement 1. Most people with disabilities are born with their impairments. This statement is false. 3% of people in Northern Ireland are born with a disability. This equates to over 55,000 people. The rest acquire a disability throughout their lives. This equates to over 331,000 people acquiring a disability in their lifetime. Statement two, most people have a family member or friend with a disability. This statement is true. One in five people or 21% of Northern Ireland's population have a disability. Statement three, people with disabilities are as likely to be employed as people without disabilities. This statement is false. The employment rate for people with disabilities in Northern Ireland is 35%, compared to around 80% of non-disabled people. So what is a disability? Take a minute to think about this. When you are ready, move to the next slide. The Disability Discrimination Act defines a disability as a physical or mental impairment which has a substantial, adverse, long-term effect on a person's ability to carry out normal day-to-day -day activities. For the purpose of this definition, substantial means that the effect of the disability is neither minor nor trivial, although it does not have to be severe. Long term means that the effect of the impairment has lasted or is likely to last for at least 12 months and normal day to day activities includes everyday things like eating, walking, getting up and dressed and washed and shopping. The Disability Discrimination Act 1995 aims to end the discrimination that people with disabilities face. This act was significantly extended, including the Disability Discrimination Northern Ireland Order 2006, requiring public authorities to demonstrate how they would promote positive attitudes towards people with disabilities and encourage participation by people with disabilities in public life. The Disability Discrimination Act outlines rights for people with disabilities in the areas of employment, education, access to goods, facilities and services, including transport services, housing and healthcare, buying or renting land or property including disability related adaptations and functions of public bodies, for example, issuing of licenses. There is also legislation under the United Nations Convention on the Rights of People with Disabilities, whose guiding principles are that people with disabilities are free to make their own choices, will not be discriminated against, have the same rights as everyone else to be included in society, should have equal opportunities, and should have equal access. Section 75 of the Northern Ireland Act 1998 
extends the rights for people with disabilities to ensure they have the same rights as everyone else. Public authorities are required to demonstrate how they would fulfil their duties to promote positive attitudes towards people with disabilities and encourage participation by people with disabilities in public life. The Disability Discrimination Act states that we must not refuse to provide a service to a person with a disability, offer a person with a disability a lower standard of service, or offer a person with a disability less favourable terms. We must make reasonable adjustments so that people with disabilities can use our services. Where a person with a disability finds it impossible or unreasonably difficult to use a service, we should change a practice, policy or procedure, provide a reasonable alternative method or provide an auxiliary aid or service. However, what is considered a reasonable adjustment for a large organisation may be different to a reasonable adjustment for a small local shop. We have to consider what is practical in the individual situation and what resources the business may have. Employers will not be required to make changes or adjustments which are impractical or beyond their means. Some examples of reasonable adjustments are to rearrange or transfer work responsibilities, to offer flexible working so the person is in work when they are at their best, to amend policies to allow exceptions for people with disabilities, to provide information in accessible format, to have someone at entry points of buildings to answer inquiries, to adapt the working environment, and to offer training, mentoring and or support. This list is not exhaustive and there are many more ways in which we can adjust practices or an environment to meet the needs of a person with a disability. When we refer to disability, there are broadly two approaches we consider, the medical and the social models. Quite often, people with disabilities are discriminated against, sometimes unintentionally, simply because they have a disability. The medical model of disability defines people by their illness or medical condition. This model disempowers people as the medical diagnosis regulates and controls access to things like social benefits and housing. This model focuses on the challenges people with disabilities may have in starting education or gaining employment because of their impairments. It focuses on the problems people with disabilities are expected to have in completing tasks for everyday living. The medical model of disability sees people with disabilities as the problem. They need to change and adapt to circumstance. There is no suggestion that society needs to change. The social model of disability sees the person as disabled by society. Sometimes it is other people's attitudes, inflexibility, and stereotypical views or environmental factors that disables people from being able to participate fully in society. In section one, we have covered the facts about disability in Northern Ireland the definition of disability, the laws supporting the rights of people with disability, and the medical and social models of disability. Section two, what you can do. 
This section focuses on what you can do to support a person with a disability. The first slide provides some general guidance and the rest focuses on specific disabilities and support that might best meet the person's needs. Don't assume a person with a disability needs help. Often they have already found a way to overcome everyday problems they encounter. Ask if the person needs some help and if they do, listen to their instructions on how you can help them. They will know best. Talk directly to the person with the disability. Do not expect the person with them to answer on their behalf. If you have one, wear your name badge and give your name when you meet someone or when answering the phone. Do not be embarrassed if you use common expressions like, see you later, and then realize this relates to the person's disability. Be aware that not all disabilities are visible. Some disabilities are hidden. Treat people with disabilities in the same way as anyone else. Make eye contact when talking with them. Make sure your conversation is age appropriate and respect their personal space. What you can do to support a person with mobility impairments. When talking with a wheelchair user, ask them if they prefer you to stand or sit or crouch down. A wheelchair or mobility aid is part of the person's space. Do not lean on this unless you would normally lean on the person. Never touch or move mobility aids without the person's consent. When speaking within a group, ensure there is space so that the wheelchair or mobility aid user can be included. Give the person information about how to access your building or any other space that you are meeting in. Make sure that walkways and doorways do not have items blocking access. How you can support a person who is deaf or has hearing loss. Do not assume you know how a person with hearing impairments wants to communicate. Let them tell you the method they prefer. Be aware that not all deaf people use sign language. However, if they do and an interpreter is present, speak to the person you are meeting, not the interpreter. Speak in your usual voice. The person won't hear you any better if you shout and the sound can be distorted through hearing aids. If you want to attract the attention of the person who is hearing impaired, touch them lightly on the shoulder or wave your hand. If the person is lip reading, look directly at them. Speak slowly and clearly. Face the light and keep hands, food, etc. away from your face. Check that the person has understood you. In some situations, written notes might be helpful. Use facial expressions, gestures and body movements to emphasize the words. For a person who is blind or has sight loss, identify yourself clearly and let the person know who else is there and where they are in the room. When talking within a group, always identify the person to whom you are speaking. Offer to provide written material in a format that the person can access. Never automatically guide a person with a visual impairment. Allow the person to take your arm at or around the elbow. 
Avoid pointing or using non-descriptive directions such as over there or up ahead. At the end of the conversation, make sure the person knows you are moving away. For a person with communication difficulties, make eye contact with the person and be patient. Give them time to talk. Resist the temptation to speak for the person or finish their sentences. Do not assume you know what the person wants. If you didn't understand, ask them to repeat what they said. They are probably used to doing this. Some people prefer to be asked questions which require short answers or a nod or a shake of their head. Use pictures or symbols to help with word finding if this is appropriate to the person. Do not rush the person, be patient and respectful. For a person with a learning disability, explain information in a straightforward way. Most people with a learning disability can understand information if plain English is used. Take time to clarify and explain things. Watch the person carefully for understanding and use gestures and facial expressions to help. Ask the individual if they have understood. If there is a family member or carer present, speak to the person first, not to the family member or carer. However, these people will know the person best and may be a good source of information about the best way to communicate. Keep distractions and background noise to a minimum. A person who has had a stroke or acquired a brain injury may have physical, emotional and or behavioural challenges. It will be important for you to ask about the challenges they now face so that you can support them fully. Remember that some of these challenges can be hidden. The person's ability to speak, read, write and use numbers may be affected. Use short sentences, emphasize key words and stick to one topic at a time. Take plenty of time when giving information as the person may need more time than usual to process it. Check for understanding by repeating or recapping. For written material, use black writing on a white background and only use pictures that are relevant. Individuals with an acquired brain injury may be easily distracted, so keep distractions to a minimum. Think about where you plan to meet the person. Is it noisy? Are there a lot of things displayed on the walls? Is there a phone that might ring during your meeting? These are some of the things that can cause a person to be distracted. Provide information in writing as well as verbally, as the person may have problems remembering what you have talked about. Individuals with acquired brain injury may display impulsive or disinhibited behaviour. Be firm but respectful, being clear about behaviours that are not acceptable and why. Lack of insight may prevent the individual from realising the full extent of their challenges. You may need to verify details with a family member or a carer. 
Be prepared for agitation or irritability. Do not overload the person, provide plenty of breaks, and be prepared to end the meeting early if necessary. For people living with dementia, find out about the life history of the individual. This can help with building rapport and trust. Say the individual's name to get their attention and to regain focus where required. Try to stick to one-to-one -one interactions as these are best for the person. Reduce distractions and background noise where possible. Use short sentences and straightforward language. Give time for the person to process what you have just said. Use pictures to support what you are saying. Do not correct or attempt to reorientate the individual. This will decrease well-being. A person with autism may not be aware of social boundaries and or body language. Be prepared to correct the person firmly, but with respect and keep facial expressions and gestures to a minimum. The person may be very literal in their verbal understanding. Always be clear and unambiguous with the information and instructions you provide. The person may not like to be touched. Do not assume they will want to shake your hand. Many people with autism may be sound sensitive, so meet in a quiet area and keep noise to a minimum. Ask if they have understood what has been said and reinforce information by asking them to repeat it back. In section two, we covered some general guidance on what you can do to support a person with a disability and what you can do to support a person with a specific disability. Section three, information for employers. This section focuses on what employers can do to support people with disability get into and stay in work. It highlights what employers can do to support their customers who have disabilities, and it provides information on what CEDAR can do to support employers. What employers can do to support people with disabilities get into work. Employers can get help. They can work with disability organizations like CEDAR to raise awareness of disability, to access on-the-job support for work placements, and to work with specialist staff to access guidance on recruiting people with disabilities. Employers can also use government schemes that are designed specifically for employers recruiting or retaining employees with disabilities. To find out more about what they can offer, go to the NI Direct link on the slide. Employers can host open days or promotional events. These will help employers find out more about the people interested in working with their organisation or company and will help people with disabilities understand what working for this employer would entail. Employers can support with training and work experience opportunities. They can provide access to facilities for training people with disabilities, as they are more likely than other groups to lack the qualifications or experience required to do the work in question. So this better equips them and helps them meet the selection criteria. Employers could offer work trials. The offer of a work trial 
would allow a candidate an alternative means of demonstrating their capability instead of, for example, a selection test. Employers can include welcoming statements in their advertisements. This could read something like applicants with a disability particularly welcome, or employers could highlight that flexible working arrangements are available. Employers could offer a guaranteed interview scheme. This could be offered to all disabled people who meet the essential criteria for the job. Employers can reserve a number of jobs for disabled people. This is called ring fencing. If an employer chooses to do this, they should work with a number of different disability groups or a consortium to widen the pool of applicants, as it is unlawful to treat a person with one type of disability more favourably than a person with another type of disability. Employers should take advice from the Equality Commission NI or other advice agencies to ensure any recruitment processes that they employ are lawful. What an employer can do to support a person with a disability stay and work. Employers can get help. They can work with specialist services like Cedars Supported Employment Solutions Service to support them and their employee maximize the chances of staying and work. Employers should understand their employees' needs. Be clear about the impact of the disability or health condition on their employees' ability to do their job. It might be that by changing one small thing, the job becomes so much more easier to do. Be a flexible employer. Flexibility may be the key to enabling employees with disabilities or health conditions stay in work. Consider flexible start and finishing times or consider whether or not your employee can work from home. Understand your legal position. Find out where you stand legally. It will take the guesswork out of decision-making and you will be able to agree actions based on sound advice. Talk to the Equality Commission NI or seek free employment law advice from the Labour Relations NI. Taking care of your customers with disabilities. Avail of training to make your staff more aware of the needs of customers with disabilities and or health conditions. This might make the difference between losing a customer and having a customer for life. Provide signs with written and pictorial directions. These will appeal to a wider range of customers. Consider access to and within your premises. It's great that customers can access your premises because you have a ramp installed at the front of the building, but it doesn't help if there are internal steps to bathrooms, if your doors aren't wide enough to accommodate a wheelchair, or if the music is too loud and distracting. Consider having a disability champion. Advertise this in store, including how a customer can get their support. Employers are keen to be more socially responsible, and there are a number of actions employers can take to demonstrate this in relation to disability. An employer could carry out an equal opportunities review. They could look at the nature of their workforce and collect evidence of their current practice. 
They could review existing policies and processes in relation to things like recruitment, flexible working, risk management, and accessible information. Employers could adopt good practice in employment using the Equality Commission's publications highlighted in this slide to guide them. Employers could develop an employment equality plan. There is a sample plan available in the Equality Commission's Outreach and Positive Action, a guide to the law and good practice for employers. In their plan, they could have agreed actions, set goals and timetables, and they should monitor and review progress to assess the impact of their plan. So what is the business case for recruiting and retaining employees with disabilities? Employers want to recruit the best person for the job. This is by far the most frequent benefit quoted by employers who have recruited and retained an employee with a disability. Employers find that employees with disabilities have a strong commitment to work, good punctuality records, and are more likely to stay in the job. Some individuals, for example, adults with autism, have specific abilities like attention to detail, methodical approaches, strong work focus, excellent record keeping, and strong research skills, which employers value. Retaining an employee who acquires a disability makes use of skills and knowledge already in place. And this makes sound commercial sense. Employing a person with a disability helps build a diverse workforce, which is more representative of the community. Employing people with disabilities may help increase the number of customers with disabilities and can increase staff morale. A dynamic workforce, which is able to respond to changes can be more skilled at getting results in different ways. Also, more diverse decision-making groups tend to make better decisions. Many people with disabilities and work do not require adjustments. If they do, they can cost little and often there is government financial support like access to work. Research has shown that 44% of adjustments cost less than £50, and these are mostly related to the physical working environment and provision of support or assistance. Improvement in communications technologies enable an employer to offer more flexible work conditions, such as equipment for working from home, which can provide saving on premises costs. In general, it costs less to make adjustments for an employee who becomes disabled than it is to recruit and train a new employee. Making small, reasonable adjustments to the way you work, how you present information and your premises can have a big impact on your customers. Adjustments made for disabled employees can benefit other employees as well as your customers. Remember, one in five people in Northern Ireland have a disability. That's a lot of potential customers with spending power. Also remember that failure to comply with the Disability Discrimination Act can be costly in litigation, in compensation awards, and in bad publicity. 
The Equality Commission have a number of resources that can support you in making the business case for employing people with disabilities. The Cedar Foundation would be happy to meet with employers to discuss your business needs and partnership opportunities, advice on other supports, incentives and grants, and adjusting your policies, skills matching and recruitment service, advice on reasonable adjustments for new or existing staff, disability awareness training, and on and off the job support for employees. Drop us an email at info at cedar-foundation.org and a representative from Cedar will get back to you. In section three, we covered what employers can do to support people with disabilities, get into and stay in work. How to take care of your customers who have disabilities. Why employ people with disabilities, the business case, and what support Cedar can provide. The Cedar Foundation's vision is a society accessible to all, offering opportunity, choice and inclusion. I hope that this training has raised your awareness of what you can do to support us to achieve our vision. If you have any questions, please email info at cedar-foundation.org. Remember to complete your evaluation. If the evaluation has not been completed on SurveyMonkey, please email the completed version to b.doherty at cedar-foundation.org. Thank you. Welcome to the Cedar Foundation's Disability Awareness Training.